Arbogast. And we are underway here in Castle Coliseum at Virginia Tech. Starts with the basketball. Chattanooga will start out, start out in their man-to-man -man defense. This is Landers Nolly. Fires the three right out of the gate, and it's off the mark. Probably not the very best look at the basket on the first possession. I'd like to see everybody get a little sweat on him and like to see everybody <laughs> get a touch. Mike Young says he's never criticized a shot since he's come to Virginia Tech. He wants these young freshmen to play freely, play confidently. They might want to criticize that one, though. The stop on the other end as Nolly and the Hokies try and find their offensive footing. Will be Sabidi, he's the go-to guy. The junior point guard leads the way. P.J. Horn, a three, and that's no good. See, and, and I'm, I'm assessing right now how Chattanooga is guarding the ball screening action. So right there, that pop, pick and pop in the middle of the floor is going to be open. Offensively, what do the Mox need to do tonight? They need to try to establish the play on the inside. I think they need to take advantage of their size while they have their size on the floor on this end of the floor. They go inside, Ramon Vila, the Barcelona Spain native, spinning and scoring. And so straight up, no help. And Vila shows that he, with two strong dribbles to the midline, can go over that left shoulder with a nice half hook. P.J. Horn with the ball right here, he typically ends up having to guard the biggest post player on the other team. He gets some revenge on the other end, though, at only six foot six. He's the number five for this Hokies team. Oh, and he does a great job of sealing his defense off and getting into the vision so he can get an easy two. It is such a fascinating Virginia Tech lineup when you look at Horn at six foot six in the post at the five. Look at Beatty right here, draws help. And when he goes to the paint, you have to stay attached to shooters. If you help on his dribble penetration, he will make you pay. You gotta make him make shots. Rod Johnson can't connect. Redshirt Jr. triggered a three. Both teams like to shoot it from deep. Nobody's connected so far tonight. Mid-range jumper, and it's pure. Naheem Aleem, the freshman, another one of these young guns for Mike Young that is very confident early in their college career. Right back to Vila. This time passing out of the post. So he can just throw right over the top of that hokey defense. Fading away, but hitting Rod Johnson. See, I think it's a terrific game plan by Lamont Paris in his third year at Chattanooga. He knows he has the size advantage. You work the ball through the baseline. Put some pressure on that front line of Virginia Tech. Nolly hits it, and that'll do wonders for Landers Nolly's confidence. Because I think Chattanooga is going to have a really difficult time defending all the action that Virginia Tech brings to the offense. When he's open inside, you got to throw it in there. Great pass, and it leads to a Matt Ryan three off the mark. And Matt Ryan on a catch and shoot when his feet are set is not going to miss many of those. A takeaway, it's Vila again. Chattanooga had the numbers, Ryan wide open, and we're tied at six. Good start early for Chattanooga. Beatty going into attack mode, lofting it up. Horn rips it down, can't cash in though. I like the read though. Beatty gets the switch and he knows if he just throws it up in the air, PJ can go get it. Three and it goes for David Jean Baptiste that he fires Chattanooga in front early in Castle Coliseum. Now Baptiste is their best off the bounce in terms of dribble penetration. So he gets his first touch as a drive to the hoop. He doesn't score. This time he sets up his ability to drive by knocking down triples.
Dee Dee's got the switch. Now Chattanooga getting it done early in an ACC road game, 9-6. ACC Network basketball brought to you by... And would, what, it, it's great. would it affect I, I, the, I, the play? I mean, no. I, I love the Tar Heels are going back inside old school playing Wofford. That has got to be a premium ticket in the triangle and in Chapel Hill. That'll be a fun one Sunday, 4 o'clock right here on the ACC Network. Chattanooga off to a hot start. They've gotten a lot of success in the post. Trying a three, though. And a foul, or that'll send the Serbian Stefan Kenich to the line, shooting three. And more college basketball comes to you right here on the ACC Network. Saturday at noon Eastern, top-ranked Louisville, at least they are right now, likely dropping come Monday, taking on Eastern Kentucky. A full day of ACC basketball on the ACC Network, Saturday, starting at noon. So Duke has been number one, yep. Virginia's been number one, Louisville's been number one, right? Michigan State was number one. Kansas as well. Kansas I, I don't think back Virginia's up been one. They should be because they're the reigning national champions. But, but yeah, Kansas, Michigan State, Duke, and Louisville are the four number ones to have gone down this season. Is that good or bad for college I basketball? I think it's great. It's great for the fans, right? It's terrific. It's wide open. I mean, I think the ACC race is wide open. Any night, anybody can win in this league. It's so competitive. There's so many tough, competitive players in, inside the ACC. Now, this Hokies team was picked 14th out of 15th. Certainly doesn't look like they'll finish that low. Tyrese Radford into attack mode. Nolly in perfect position for the putback. Let's see if Coach Young makes an adjustment on how they defend the low post. They've been playing straight up. It was Ramon Vila who capitalized at the post early. He's out of the game, so it'll be Stefan Kenich down low. Feed into Johnson. Tough take. Could not finish. Ball sprung, and it falls to Jalen Cohn. One on three. Smart pass. A nolly three. Can't connect. Radford thought he had the follow. Back out to Nolly. Wide open three. Jalen Cohn will make you pay every time, shooting better than 50% from deep. What a terrific job to move the. Seven of the Hokies' 13 points have been second chance points. And this Chattanooga team, they have no excuse. They're actually the taller team. But they've let a couple of offensive rebounds get away, and Virginia Tech, Tech has capitalized. Gene Baptiste, hard to the hole, but a travel call. Hokies ball. Checking in for the Hokies, number one, Well, the the early part of the game, Chattanooga was getting the ball on the block and they were having success for Lamont Paris, his team. This is just his third year as a head coach. We had a great conversation with him today talking about Bo Ryan and the influence Coach Ryan had on him and all the years he spent at Wisconsin. Talk about a guy you want to learn under there, Bo Ryan. He said he's got nothing but praise and now that Bo's retired and you know, Lamont's running his own program. We said, do you hear from him? He said, oh, all the time, but never about basketball unless I ask him a question. Well, I think Coach Ryan has a, you know, a zillion plays that he could offer, but I, I think that mentorship is more about encouraging and, you know, helping Lamont through his first head coaching experience. And I'm sure that uh, Coach Ryan is known I, I, for being a great storyteller. Sure, he's got a story for every occasion. He was on the bench with Bo Ryan for eight years in Madison. He said the winning got contagious, had a couple of chances to leave and start his on program before he went to Chattanooga, but liked the fit with the mocks. 
Tyrese Radford is doing a terrific job defending Matt Ryan. I mean, he's trying to play Ryan, no catch. He's chasing him over the top of screening action. He's going to take a seat right now, but he is the best perimeter defender for Coach Young. Back into the ball game for the Hokies, number four, Naheem Ali. And 14. Bradford, another freshman. I mean, Mike Young, he is playing mostly freshmen. They lost 84% of the scoring for the team that went to the Sweet 16 a year ago. And they've replaced it with a, a confident freshman group that has been playing with a lot of maturity early in this season. Poked away there. Really great ball pressure. Up quickly, Isaiah Wilkins comes up empty. Scott fires a three and hits it. Jonathan Scott, the senior, ties this game at 13. Chattanooga fighting hard early. Oh, Chattanooga doing a good job in their pick and roll action there getting a hard roll to the rim, and it's allowing the bottom part of the defense to tag just a little bit. It allows their shooters to get set. Horn gets rid of it quickly. Too much on it, though. Great hustle for Isaiah Wilkins to keep it alive. Beatty straight to the rack, had everything but the finish. Matt Ryan at three. <laughs> That one does not go. Ryan coming off an 18-point game in the, the last outing. He's had a couple of good looks outside the arc. Very fast pace of the last couple of minutes between these two teams. Into the post, Ramon Vila. He's had success there. Double team does not come. Now it does. Spun right into it and muscles his way for two. Great finish by Vila, the 6'8 redshirt junior. Transfer from Arizona State. Four lead changes, five ties. He's a lot to handle basketball. in there. He's a lot to handle inside. Yeah. Virginia Tech's success came when he was off the court. He's been the go-to guy early for the Mox. A lead in traffic, buries it. Really nice curl. Defense lock and trail behind, and Helene gets to get enough space to get it into that rhythm of his jumper with his left hand. And he is left-handed. Another three, and again, the second time tonight, David Jean Baptiste comes up clutch. They're big guys with that hard roll to the rim, really forces the Virginia Tech defense to suck in just enough to allow some space to get into those threes. Midway through this first half, it's Chattanooga up by three. Three seconds on the shot clock. Aline has to fire. He buries it. Well, he's played really well on both ends of the floor. And he's got the Matt Ryan defensive assignment right now. Back tied at 18. Naheem Aline leads the Hokies with seven points early. Ryan in trouble. Double team comes. Horn got a piece of it. Thrown ahead, a lean again. It's good. Two times this season, a lean's been over the 20 point mark. Back to back threes for Naheem Aline. Ryan looking for the answer. Really good job to contest. I'd go right back to a lean. He's got the hot hand. He's hit back-to-back -back threes, leads the Hokies with 10. Cone. Yeah, that's a travel. Just lost his footing. These two teams going back and forth. Hokies have the lead by three midway through the first. Points for the Hokies. He hasn't missed tonight. He's four for four from the floor. He's got a couple of triples. 10 points in Carmichael Arena, home of Michael Jordan. 
Should be fun to watch a game being played in there. We'll be locked into that one. Great basketball all weekend right here on the ACC Network. Don't have to wait to the weekend, though. We've got a good one here at Castle Coliseum. Maurice Commander, great name. Typically a good game, but he lost the handle on that one. Coach Young talking about hard cut, space the floor, good detail, execution. A lean, a heat check, but it goes begging. They run a great play to get him to the elbow. DJ e. Horn working hard to front Vila. Four freshmen on the court right now for Mike Young. They do get it to Vila. Passes out of the post. And once you push him all the way up the lane, you don't want to front him anymore. Tapped around and out. Radford has it for Virginia Tech. He lost the handle, though. Falls to Aline. That's who you wanted to fall to, but swirled around. Didn't go down. Quickly into Vila. That's where they've been successful tonight. Second effort, and he's fouled on his way to the rim. We'll step aside. Vila at the foul line. When we come back, Hokie's still in front by three. Answer today, join ESPN and the V Foundation and go to visit v.org slash donate. All donations benefiting the V Foundation for Cancer Research. What a great idea and a, a wonderful way to involve your student body and the community. And, and everyone can get involved because I think everyone wants to give. Sometimes people just don't know how. But if you go to v.org, there's a way you can help save someone's life. I knew Coach V personally because I went to NC State and he was a coach when I was a player uh, for K. Yao. And he was a, a wonderful guy, a friend with his daughter, Nicole. And uh, my favorite part about his speech is he, if you donate and help us fight cancer, you might not save my life, but you might save the life of one of my children. And, and the V Foundation did save his daughter, Jamie's life. It's so many lives across the country. Great isolation for Nolly in the middle of the floor. Because you get the one-on-one, -on -one, and he is a terrific one-on-one -on -one scorer. It's hard to bring help to the middle of the floor when you have the kind of shooters around the three-point line. He's coming off a season-low seven points against Duke, but Landers Nolly already with six points early in this game. Rod Johnson to three, well short. Good job to bring some help and turn Vila into a passer because they've had trouble guarding him in that one-on-one -on -one matchup. John Ogiaco, a freshman, Mike Young's really excited about. He takes a shot at yeah. the post, lefty hook, gets his own rebound though and puts it home. Great hustle on the back, baseline by Radford. And Ogiaco today was working on that very post move. We watched him before practice started. Really working on his footwork. That young man could really help this team as the season goes on. Right now. Somebody with some size, at yep. 6'10". He's a freshman, he's gonna learn. Bodying up Vila, lost him though, and the junior from Spain cashes in. What a beautiful pocket pass by Commander. What a great name that is for a point guard. Maurice Commander. He's definitely in charge of the offense. And in charge of the Virginia Tech offense will be Sabidi, no doubt about it. Seven assists per game. He just makes it look so easy. Into Nolly. Five on the shot clock, fading away. That won't go. Radford attacking the glass again and is fouled. He is a beast down there. What a great job on the weak side. This is the hustle play underneath the basket. There's a nice job of tipping it back in for Ojiako to be able to knock it down. And then a terrific pass right out of your hip pocket, right to a short <laughs> I roll. Like that. 
mean, at only six foot one, Tyrese Radford makes you think he's six foot six. Nolly off the inbounds pass, can't connect. Another offensive rebound. That's number seven on the night for Virginia Tech, and again, it leads to points. You know what, Bisabidi does such a good job of playing the hips and shoulders game. If he can get his hips and his shoulders by his defender and turn that corner, he is tough to deal with because you can't knock him off his line. He's too strong. Virginia Tech now with 11 second chance points. That has been backbreaking for this Chattanooga team. He's smaller and he sticks his chest right in Matt Ryan and causes a turnover. Great defense by Beatty. Open three. That would have took the roof off Castle Coliseum. I wonder as that as a shooter when you're shooting out of the corner if the student section catches your eye because they, they, all... they all raise their arms for three. <laughs> it might. Maurice Commander comes up empty. It's, it's pretty cool. I mean, they're all yelling three before the ball even leaves his hands. That one rolls in and out, and one. Naheem Aline, second effort, hoop of the harm. A plus eight advantage on the glass right there for Virginia Tech, and their current run is a 14 to three run. You mentioned the nine offensive rebounds. It's led to 13 second chance points, so that's how Virginia Tech has ballooned this lead to nine points tonight. Usually coming off a timeout, you expect a team to really ramp up their defensive effort. Let's see if Chattanooga can get, get something going back door. Matt Ryan trying to go through that back door. Kanich could not pick him out, and he misses. And an offensive foul called against Wabisa Beatty. Yeah, Beatty knew it as soon as Horn tried to go by him. You got to be set on that dribble handoff. Coming up on our State Farm halftime report, Packer and Durham give you their ACC power rankings, and we'll give you news and notes from around the league. Well, Virginia Tech was picked to finish second to last of the ACC. I don't think Packer and Durham will have the Hokies near the bottom. Open three, Commander does not come up with it. Just one made field goal in the last seven minutes for Chattanooga as this lead continues to grow, but Virginia Tech sloppily gives it away. And surprisingly, Beatty with his first turnover. He got three assists. And we talked about him having the best assist turnover ratio in the ACC. Uh, I, I say he answers what I call the three W's. Who to get the ball to, when, and where. He does a terrific job of running this team. And for such a young group to have a junior as talented and as competitive as he has been this season, that makes the guys around him so much better. Muscling his way to the hoop, somehow it drops for David Jean Baptiste. You see why he's their best off the bounce. I mean, that was a lot of dribbles. Yep. But it, he scored it. Only their second basket in nearly eight minutes of play, much needed. Nolly spinning into the lane. Pop off the glass, does not fall. Gene Baptiste goes to work again. Stephen Kennedy backing down Horn, and once again, points of the paint, name of the game for Chattanooga well, tonight. That's their advantage, and that's how they're able to come back. They're going inside. They're attacking off the bounce. Points in the paint. Gene Baptiste off the bounce. Kenich with his back to the basket. Beatty showing off the mid-range game, but does not fall. Yeah, so Beatty has uh, 
got called for a foul on the dribble handoff. He's turned it over once, and I, I would call that a turnover right there, too, because that was a bad shot. He's such a good facilitator. He only shoots when necessary. Another Kenich. short pop. And it goes. Stefan Kenich back-to-back -back buckets. It's a 7 nothing run for Chattanooga. And Mike Young says, give me a timeout. And it's not his offense that's the problem. It's the defense and defending Chattanooga's action. They're scoring inside off the bounce. They go over their back to the basket, and then they get a little sh a short pop right here. And Kenich has three-point range. He has been such a big boost for this Chattanooga team. Cleveland State transfer. He got his transfer waiver appeal approved just a couple of weeks ago, November 26th. And since he's come into this lineup, Lamont Paris says he gives us such a different dynamic because he's a big guy who can shoot on the yeah, perimeter. He's four for seven on the season outside the arc. Might want to start taking a few more. Yeah, well, it was only his sixth game, right? He didn't get to play the beginning part right. of the season. He wasn't cleared for this transfer waiver until November 26th on a second appeal, and they were able to, to get him eligible to play right away. We don't know how that transfer thing works, do we? We just don't know. No. Some and, and people are eligible, some people are not. And it really hurts programs when you don't know, when it's a question mark, he can't plan. Radford denied at the rim, trying to stuff it in, but he'll head to the line for two. How would you fix the, the transfer problem? How would you make it uniform? I think I'd go with a one-time transfer and let him be eligible and, and that's it. And the graduate transfer rule has morphed into something different than what it was meant for initially. It's just like charter flights. Teams used to, <laughs> teams used to charter flight for an academic reason. They chartered so they could get back and go to class. Right. Well, now everybody takes classes online. Well, I don't even know they ongo really go classes, to class. Well, the class is always ongoing. <laughs> On the ch charter flight is now class. You get the books out. Wi-Fi on the plane. Yeah, exactly. A four-point lead for Virginia Tech. Another 30 seconds to go until halftime. Right into the teeth of the Hokies defense again, Gene Baptiste. Shot clock is off for the final 15 seconds. I'd run something for Nolly here, and Coach Young told us about 20% of his playbook is for Landers Nolly. There he is on a post up, calling for the ball. They get it to him at the end of the clock, throws it up, does not fall, and the Hokies take a four point lead at the halftime. Naheem lead 13 points, better than his season average, out of the Hokies, 32. And for Chattanooga, who you do not see, is their leading scorer, Matt Ryan, who is 1 for 4, 0 oh for 3 outside the three-point line. He's had Radford on him most of the night, and Radford is considered their best perimeter defender. Yeah, he's proved it tonight. Ryan held to two points in that first half. Here he is now, passing off. Leads to a commander three, and the sophomore can't connect. Matt Ryan usually at 15 points a game. Notre Dame and Vanderbilt commit. If he gets going, they could erase his four-point deficit quickly. Obisa Petey on the blow-by, but rejected at the rim. Great recovery from Ramon Vila. So he decided to go to the other side of the rim because he thought he could beat the shot blocker there, but the shot blocker got there and recovered. Now we've told you all night, Chattanooga has the size advantage. Very rarely a SOCON team would have the length and the height against an ACC opponent. Yeah, I think Matt Ryan goes to the low block and draws two. Great recovery by Beattie. And a shot clock violation at just six foot, Beattie getting up for the rejection. Beattie can cover some ground now. He is terrific on the defensive end. And playing through that double team, 
Yeah, I like Matt Ryan going to the block to invert a little bit and see if they can get some action off it. Dolly gets his shot away so quickly that time can't connect. They go right back to Matt Ryan. They switch that dribble handoff. A Ryan with a little space. Deep three. Can't knock it down. Offensive rebound, that is what crushed Chattanooga and more second chance points this time. Tyrese Radford cashing in. You look to strike quickly before Chattanooga can get organized with their defense. 11 offensive rebounds in this game and it's led to 16 second chance points for the Hokies. Tons of contact, nothing called. Good job of moving the ball. PJ Horn in the post up. Double Good team help. comes. And it's another Hokies takeaway. Radford was just reading the eyes of Commander on that feed inside. Now on the offensive end, Radford takes it right to the hoop. Can't cash in, though. Right back to the post. Double team came, kick out, and it's good. Third three of the night. David Jean Baptiste is on fire. Well, Vila does a nice job of getting deep position inside. The deeper you can catch it, the further it is to close out to the three point line if you're going to bring the double. Jean Baptiste, perfect from deep, three for three. And just like that, Chattanooga back within three, one possession game. Five to shoot. DJ Horn goes to work, has to get rid of it and does. And it travels the call on Ramon Vila. It's a three point hokey lead. Vila with a nice job drawing help. Spotting up, Jean Batiste outside the arc. So with their leading scorer struggling, credit to Virginia Tech, as you pointed out defensively, how has Chattanooga stayed in this game? They've been able to score through their post play. I think their defense has been pretty solid. Now, they've given up too many offensive rebounds to Virginia Tech, but their big guys have come to play today. 11 offensive rebounds. It's led to 16 Hokie second chance points, but the lead is only three for Virginia Tech. Landers Nolly that's trying a, to extend it. That's a tough shot, Jay. It is. I mean, that's a fall away, contested, tough shot. The second half has not been uh, a good offensive performance by either team. Now just two of 13, these two teams combined to start this second half. Hard roll to the rim, rise. And now you get the ISO. And, and you get the foul. Yep. Coming up after us tonight, all ACC in the studio. Nobody covers the ACC like we do right here on the ACC Network. They will break down what has been a pretty wild week in the ACC. A couple of football coaches getting hired. Mike Norvell in Florida State and Louisville's loss last night. Plenty to talk about. Uh, I was at uh, Florida State on Sunday when Mike Norvell got announced as the new football coach at Florida State and we had him on the air for the Clemson Florida State game and uh, boy he's he's got a clear and consistent message about what he plans to do with that program we, we, we wish him well absolutely we've got a great game here in Castle Coliseum Virginia Tech only leading by one I don't know how 
Cone found Wilkins outside the arc. What a tough find. This is a team in Virginia Tech that has shot it better than 40% from three. One of the best three-point shooting teams in the entire country. They're three of 16 from deep tonight. Well, in their six wins, they made 13. In their three losses, they only made eight. They'd love eight right now. <laughs> only three so far tonight. Nolly, the runner, beautifully laid in. A little bit of a smaller lineup on the floor for Chattanooga to match up. But Kenich likes that pick and pop. Jonathan Scott, count it, plus the foul. Senior has a chance to tie it at the line. Jonathan Scott was a starter last year at Chattanooga. He comes off the bench this year, and he has really excelled in that role for Lamont Paris. Does a nice job of attacking the closeout, keeping his eyes on the rim with the contact. calls against Jonathan Scott that time. No, Mike Young, he isn't afraid to admit it. He says, look, we live and we die by the three-point ball, better or worse. And when you're three of 16, you'd likely be dying, but the Hokies have grinded their way through this one. A one-point lead. I, I but, think, you know what, Jay, I think it's gonna be the way it's gonna be for them this year. You know, they. They've got to get teams in the bonus so they can get to the free throw line and get easy scoring. They've got to be really good in their situational offense, all their baseline, sideline, their ATOs. Got to have, a, he calls it a plus eight. Tonight was the goal on all those special situations. Great defense there. Rod Johnson all over Nolly, didn't give him an inch. Yeah, and I think one of the things, especially the last couple of possessions for Virginia Tech that I've noticed is they're trying to play off the bounce. They're a passing, cutting team, and that's when they're at their best. When you use the dribble, one or two dribbles, just to improve your angle or to get a better opportunity at the basket. Too much ISO and one-on-one -on -one right now for Coach Young's team. And that's not the way he coaches or the way he teaches. Do you think he's getting some flashbacks from the SOCON drag out fights between Wofford and Chattanooga? <laughs> it's a, it's, I don't, I it's don't a tough one. <laughs> I mean, he said, you know, when you, when you play Chattanooga, you could always expect a tough, grinded out game. Well, look, that's a great basketball league. All right, the SOCON is terrific. I, I mean, Steve Forbes and East Tennessee State were picked to win the league. He's a terrific teacher, Steve Forbes. He's had a lot of success there. Fans don't like the call on the floor. They thought it was a push off on Jonathan Scott. Instead, Chattanooga ball. Last lead for the box was when it was 18 15 in the first half, an opportunity to go in front here. Into the post, Stefan Kenich into a double team up and in. Well, the double comes baseline, but Kenich just can power over the top of it. Six lead changes, but the first one since the first half. Cohn somehow keeps the play alive, steps into that shot, can't knock it down. Beating the offensive board, this is where Virginia Tech has made their money tonight. 16 second chance points. Nolly, turd shoots and hits. Yeah, that's a great job to repost and for Beatty to get him the ball where he knows he's got an advantage. That's the IQ of Wabisa Beatty. Playing a much different role on this year's team.
AJ called well. He can't connect on that three. Falls to Beatty again. Nolly the trailer, a three. It's good! Landers, Nolly right on cue in the Virginia Tech lead back to four. Matt Ryan not even looking at the basket right now. Has to fire with the shot clock winding down, and that's out of bounds. Matt Ryan not at a good groove, but Landers now he is. He is the last seven points for the Hokies. And this is the versatility of his offensive skill set. He can invert to the block, score over taller players. Loves the way he's playing right now. He is the Hokies' last <laughs> seven points. Learn a little more about the freshman from Atlanta, Georgia. How about biggest fear, my mom? <laughs> he sh yeah. Every young man should be afraid of their mother. <laughs> and their friends should be too. And I guess because of the fear of mom, he, he needs to get in the classroom, and he did hey. last year while he was red shirting. He was all academic on the honor roll. What a great job by that young man. He, he practiced every day. He didn't get to travel with the team. But obviously, he, he comes here as a, a great scorer, and he's got his business together off the floor. Mr. Basketball of the state of Georgia, his senior year, he came to play for Buzz Williams. Didn't get the opportunity to do so. Here's Beattie, two on the timer, fires off the mark. I, I bet his mom is really proud of him. Mm -hmm. So he sits out. And then goes, well, now I've got a new coach. He puts his name in the transfer portal, but because of the connection that he found with Mike Youngs, took his name out, and boy, Hokie fans are glad he did because he's been their go-to guy, leads the team near 20 points a game. Here comes the double from the low side. Feed the Caldwell. And again, misfiring from three, battle for the board, picked up and put in. Rod Johnson, right place, right time. So the double has gotten the ball off the low block, but the skip passes to the reverse side, really Chattanooga hasn't made any of those triples. Double. So it's working. More college basketball for you Saturday, noon Eastern time. Starts a full slate of games on the ACC network. It's top ranked Chris Mack in Louisville taking on Eastern Kentucky. All games also stream on the ESPN app. If you're Mike Young down the stretch, halfway through the second half, how are you going to close this game out? Well, I think you're going to continue to execute on the offensive end. You're going to continue to find shots for... Aline and Landers, Nolly. Oh, that time getting creative, finding his own shot. Naheem Aline leads the Hokies with 15 points. And I think you got to work really hard on the defensive end right here to make sure you get a stop and a rebound. Inside again, that's been the recipe all night and again, two points. Ramon Vila from Barcelona, Spain. He has been so effective in the post tonight. Well, he works really hard off the ball, and he's catching the ball in what you would call the dunker spot, right? Every time he gets deep in the paint, that is really hard to bring a double, time, a double team, and it's too quick to score to bring a double team. Right back to Aline. Why not? Although this time he lost the handle. doing a really good job of feeding the post also. This time Vila setting a screen. Gene Baptiste uses it. Didn't get a great angle. Tapped back out at 20 seconds on the shot clock. Vila. Pops it. Oh, everything going for Ramon Vila. Buries it off the glass and fires Chattanooga in front. He was just trying to get a piece of the rim. <laughs> That's when you know it's your night. Right back the other way. Tapped out of bounds. It'll be Chattanooga basketball. 
Watch Aline with a great footwork inside. Gets to that left hand. Scores against Matt Ryan. And then off the glass, deep into the shot clock. But they reversed that. Ted Valentine came over and said it should be Virginia Tech ball, and it is. I, I mean, look, Vila, if he beats you in the post, I get it. But that, you know, an answered prayer, if you're Virginia Tech, all you can do is throw your hands up. Maurice Commander rips the rebound away. I'll tell you what, Lamont Paris has done a great job with this game plan, bringing this team in here, taking advantage of their size, and they've been consistently going and playing through the low block. Can it you three? That doesn't go down. Good D by Kenich. Alini lost the basketball again. Battle for it underneath. Chattanooga has it and takes a timeout. Now the mocks of Chattanooga clinging to a one-point lead. This is going to be a really fun finish down the stretch here at Blacksburg. With Simply Safe's Video Doorbell Pro, you'll know if the person at your door is friend or foe. Their offense, they've been able to score on the block, they've been able to play without Matt Ryan really having a big game. And Matt Ryan, their leading scorer, averages 15 points. Over the last three games, he's averaged 18. Tonight, the defense has done a terrific job holding Matt Ryan one for six and 0 for five outside the three-point line. Here he is with the ball. Trying to get him on a pin down. Kenich backing down Horn. Goes up with it and is fouled. We step aside again. That was quick. Seven minutes left. We've got a great one on the ACC network on our hands. Hugo, well, he knew he was getting a fight tonight. A 14 win, 15 loss record. It is 17 years as a head coach against Chattanooga in the SOCON. The interesting thing is Virginia Tech has had to go about it a different way tonight, right? They, they've got, they have not been able to get to the free throw line, but their offensive rebounding has been really good considering they're last in the ACC in offensive rebounding percentage. And they haven't been able to knock down enough triples, but they're right there. So you got to play the percentages and believe that the three is going to start falling. Oh, nice Beedy play. All the way to the rack, and we're tied at 45. Yeah, what a great job by Beatty to read the defense. They started out looking like they were in the horn set, and then Landers' little misdirection allowed that lane to be open down the lane line. Matt Ryan off the screen. Can't hit it. He's off tonight, usually 15 points a game, only two to his name. He's one of seven and O oh of six from three. But grabs the rebound there. Catch and shoot and make Stefan Kenich drills it to put the Mox back up by three. All the five players for Lamont Paris can shoot the triple. Nolly the answer. It's good. Great screen by P.J. Horn. It's only a two, though. Foot on the line. Gene Baptiste. He's perfect from deep, but dumps it inside. Back out, fires the three. It's good. And he's hit his fourth three of the night, David Jean Baptiste. Back to back triples. So the largest lead of the night for Chattanooga yeah, you gotta at four. Run through your stuff here, Jay. You got to execute. Ball in the middle of third is really hard to guard. Kick out three. Much needed, and the freshman not.
Raheem Aline drills it. And this is where Chattanooga makes a defensive mistake. Beattie drives down the lane line. That's the strong side. That weak side three shouldn't be available. You're not supposed to pinch off the shooter that much. It's a three-point shootout. That one goes begging, though. Ibidia, when he sees and reads, he gets shots for everyone when they space the floor. Inside, Tanali turns and shoots that one. Misses, though, he had made an identical shot earlier this half. Double team comes on Johnson. Great balance. Baptiste hasn't missed outside the arc. He's having a huge night. But the post play for Chattanooga is a combined 10 for 12 inside, and 3 for 4 outside the arc. So they're getting great balance. So Virginia Tech is going to have to be able to score on this end of the floor and get organized on the defensive end and try to force those post guys into passers. Nahima Lean's been the go-to guy tonight. 18 points to lead the Hokies. Draws the foul there. The freshman heads to the foul line. As on, as on Chattanooga's number 15, Ramon Vila. This is first 13 foul of the half. A lead in the freshman class here for Virginia Tech has accounted for 70% of the scoring this season for Mike Young. See, this is a good sign. Their first trip to the free throw line in the second half. Not a lot of fouls either way. You know, Chattanooga with three fouls, Virginia Tech with four in the second half. And that could play a big part down the stretch. You have to keep an eye on fouls to give. I'm sure Coach Young and both Coach Paris have someone on their staff assigned to keep an eye on that. And with those two made foul shots, Naheem Aline ties a career high, gives the Hokies back the lead, and the student section gets into full voice. Foul called. That comes against Tyrese Radford. Every Sunday, you can tune into the best basketball show. Nothing but net. You'll get a look at the best games of the week and a preview of the games to come. Nothing but net this Sunday, 6 o'clock Eastern time on the ACC Network. Commander rejects the screen. Oh, what a play. Oh, it doesn't go. Everything but the finish and a foul called on Rod Johnson after he missed the layup from point blank range. What a break for Virginia Tech. What a nice leave by Commander. Johnson stays down. Pops up there. Have to have a short memory in this game, right? Yeah, you do. Yes, because you got to move on to the next play. And you can't afford to make back-to-back -back mistakes in a possession-for-possession -possession game. Johnson now guarding Nolly. And you can't have game slippage either, Jay. So everything about your detail here has to be perfect. Cut hard. Move without the ball. Nolly. Five seconds to shoot into the lane, up, and he's fouled. And for not having gone to the free throw line, this is a great sign for Virginia Tech late. Back-to-back -back trips to the stripe. And Nolly, a confident foul shooter, 80% from the line in his freshman season. This is his first trip to the free throw line all night. Who wouldn't want to play in a system like this where you have the green light? Well, you don't hear many coaches say, I have not criticized a shot all season. 
and he wants his freshman class to play with freedom. Give them confidence to win games down the stretch. They run Ryan off the Iverson cut, but Radford has done a great job all night. Oh, Radford's going to get called for the foul. He ran over Rod Johnson. And that's the fifth that's team foul, team Jay. All right, make that the sixth team foul. He just plows right through Johnson. Matt Ryan hasn't hit a three all night, so you continue to go over the top of screens because if the, the time you go under is the one he's going to stick to. He's 0 for 6 from deep. It's all in who you trust also at this point in the game for coaches. P.J. Horn, he took a gamble and it paid off. He fronted Vila, and the lob was too strong. It's a 7-0 Hokies run down the stretch here in Castle Coliseum. Radford goes baseline, the blow by, and the scoop to the hoop. Timeout, Mike Young, Virginia Tech on a 9-0 run and a five-point lead. Well, you'd be in a two-possession game with a minute 46, and Matt Ryan wasn't a factor. I think you might take that because he's been clearly their best player this season. But this is a Chattanooga team that is deceiving for their record. I mean, they've played some tough competition already this season. And they've, they've played a, a very balanced offensive game tonight. And Matt Ryan's not even on the floor right now. David Jean Baptiste, number three in Navy and Gold, waiting for the ball. He is a perfect four for four from three. Goes around a double screen. Tanich follows it up perfectly and puts it in. Good execution. Good effort by Kenich. It's back to a one possession game. 75 seconds remain in regulation. Watch the acceleration through this set by Virginia Tech. Open three. Wabisa Beatty knocks it down. I'm telling you, that guy makes every big play for Virginia Tech this season. Late game plays. Gene Baptiste looking for an answer. It goes begging. You got fouls to give. If you're Chattanooga, you might want to use them. You got a foul. Have to. A lot of time coming off the clock. The foul finally comes in, but 10 seconds too late. This is terrific ball movement. Great acceleration through all their sets, and Beatty knocks down his first triple of the game. I'm telling you, that kid makes every big play for Virginia Tech late. One of the lone veterans for Mike Young, and he really plays like one. He told us before the game, I could not ask for a better leader of this team. Well, and Chattanooga let too much time go off the clock and needed to foul because they had one to give. Now on the next foul, it's one and one. This one, I would thought, would come immediately, but again, a couple of seconds, three seconds, tick off the clock, and now Landers Nolly, who's shooting better than 80% from the line, will have one and one. Well, they do a good job getting him the basketball, but Chattanooga should have been denying him and making someone else like Beatty, who's a 53% free throw shooter, go to the line. Makes the first, so he'll get the second. Virginia Tech on a 13-2 run. 
So you're switching on everything if you're Virginia Tech. You're running them off the three-point line. I think Chattanooga can get a quick two. You're trying to extend the game here, but if you get a three and it's available, you take it. They opted for the three. Offensive rebound, that's no good. A third effort finally is. But again, at 25 seconds have come off the clock in that sequence and you're still down by six. It's a two possession game. And Naheem Aleen, the freshman for Mike Young, has been outstanding. Scored early, got it going. He made his first four shots. They run him through the elbows. He's got range outside the three-point line. He sprints in transition to the corner. He's done a nice job of getting a piece of the paint. Great footwork on the inside. Good spacing to the three-point line. His third 20-point game of the season. Yeah, it was not pretty for... from deep now six of 21 so they made him when it counted down the stretch but a young team a talented team that really was challenged for most of the night tonight I think Ch Chattanooga gave them all they could handle uh, with 22 seconds left now if you're Chattanooga don't let Landers not only catch the inbound let be Sabidi catch it and then foul right away he would be the least percentage free throw shooter on the floor Chattanooga has one timeout remaining. Virginia Tech still has two, so you can run the baseline here. If you can't get the ball in bounds, you can call timeout. Unsurprisingly, Chattanooga brings full court pressure on the inbounds. Interestingly, it's Nolly, the inbounder. They tried to get it right back to him, and they do. Drafted a double team, and a foul comes in. And that's not the guy you want headed to the well, foul line. It's a break for Virginia Tech. You don't want to inbound the basketball and put it in the corner. Right. You want to keep the ball in the middle of the floor. Nolly, perfect tonight, four for four. He can take care of it right here. Yep. What an effort by Chattanooga, though. How much fun is the SoCon going to be this year? This is the front end uh -oh. of the one and one. Life for Chattanooga. Need a quick three. Jonathan Scott buries. Deal first, Nolly eyeing up his options, gets it into fellow freshman Nahima Lean. It's one and one. Yep. So depending on what happens here. Now with a foul shot, a lead will earn his career high in his freshman season with 21 points, but more importantly, he'll make it a two possession game. Getting another three-point shooter on the floor and 
A.J. Caldwell. The weight of the game on the freshman from Buford, Georgia's shoulders. Naheem Aline buries it. Now it's uh, no foul. It's stay out of the way. Doubles his season average with 22 points tonight, Aline. Chattanooga goes quickly with Gene Baptiste. That's no good, and Virginia Tech holds on a 63-58 win for Mike Young and his Young Hokies team. What a great win. What a terrific team effort. Survived the size advantage of Chattanooga.